Hey guys, it is April 1st at 12.10 p.m. and I don't know when you guys are going to see this vlog. I actually have a day in the life vlog that I need to edit, but I haven't had time because of school and also just like mental health issues. My anxiety has been out of this world and I'm really not good at like dealing with everything at once so I just haven't done anything so really sorry about that but if you guys follow me on like snapchat and instagram then you always know what I'm doing I'm always doing stuff I just don't always have time to like sit down and edit an entire video so nonetheless I'm gonna try and edit that today but since it's Saturday I usually train on Friday or Saturday I train five times a week now um, I don't think I've really updated you guys on what my splits looking like for the week so I squat three times a week um, I squat Monday Wednesday and then Friday or Saturday depending on what day I go to the gym and then um, on Mondays I also hit quads and hamstrings on Tuesdays I bench and I do triceps and abs on Wednesdays um, I do squat I usually do like kind of a in-between load like I'll usually do uh, three to five sets of five something like that kind of depending on how things went on Monday but Monday tends to be my heavier day for squats so I'll usually work up pretty high um, towards my max if not to my max um, I don't really have any dedicated programming right now. I liked doing 531 for a while, but I really want to incorporate some more volume and maybe find a program that I can run uh, two to three days a week since I'm squatting so much now. I think it'll be more beneficial if I can find something that is really going to help me and do some different squat variations. And then um, today I'm going to squat and I'm going to deadlift. So I'm only benching once a week right now because Thursdays is my upper body hypertrophy day. So I do uh, back, biceps, and shoulders. And then on Wednesday, I will usually do like more uh, quads and hamstrings. I don't train glutes. As you guys all know, if you're new here, I don't isolate my glutes because I don't need to. And I just want to talk about that for a second because a lot of people ask me about glute exercises, how to grow your glutes. The first thing to grow your glutes is you need to be eating enough. So you need to be in a caloric surplus. And honestly, when you're in a surplus, do not worry about gaining fat because you can't control it. You can't control where the fat's going to go and you can't control how much you're going to gain. That really comes down to your metabolism and your uh, genetics, which are two things that are very, very hard to control. They may be, a li may be a little more possible to help or hurt your metabolism, but genetics, that's just genetics. Like you can't control that. The, those are just the cards that you've been dealt. So just don't worry about the fat gain because you cannot stop it and it is 100% necessary when you're trying to build muscle. So just get over it. If you don't want to gain fat, then you just have to stay the way that you look right now. That's, you can't, <laughs> you can't stop it. So don't worry about that. So number two is going to be your training. So everyone always asks like, what exercises should I do? Which exercises are the best? There's no like perfect exercises. It's really what you enjoy doing. So I love squatting and I love doing compound movements. So that is a big thing in my training. And that's one of the things that has helped me the most with growing my glutes, but that's just me. Squats may not help you as much as they helped me. So find stuff that works for you. Um, I've got like two glute videos up, showing you guys some of my favorite exercises. So if you like them, go ahead and do them. The exercises that I have learned and that I have found, I found on bodybuilding.com. If you change the exercises to be like highest rated to lowest rated, try out some of the highest rated ones. The reason why some are lower on the list is because they either don't include weights, which you kind of need some weights and resistance to gain muscle. Um, they're going to naturally be at the lowest part of the list or because they're just unnecessary. There's so many workouts where it's like, if you had just done half of that exercise, it would have been more beneficial than using all your energy, making things more difficult. So don't worry too much about like, what is a good and a bad exercise. Just do things that you like doing. If you don't enjoy doing an exercise, and it's not just because you're not good at it yet, then drop it and try something else. Don't worry about what everyone else is doing because that may not work for you. It's just like everyone's like, oh my god, squat to grow a butt. If you're quad dominant and you're squatting, squatting is not going to give you a big butt. It's going to give you huge legs. I just happen to be the complete opposite. So it's going to depend 
on you and factors that you mostly can't control. And the third biggest thing for growing a butt is time. I don't know why everyone thinks that it takes like a month to grow a butt, but I saw the tiniest changes, like smallest changes. Um, if you scroll through my Instagram, within eight to nine months in my glutes, um, the changes weren't huge. And my butt genetically grows extremely fast, which is why I don't train my glutes because I just don't have to. I put on eight inches in a year and a half. I've been training for a year and like six months now. So that's not normal. Um, that is genetics. Now I'm not saying that I didn't work hard for what I did because I did work hard. Um, and genetics are not 100% why I look the way I do now, but they are a huge factor in that. I'm not gonna lie to you guys and pretend like you can grow your glutes as quickly as I did because I'm completely different from you and my genetics really played a role in how quickly they grew. Not to say that if you do all the same exercises that I do that you're not going to see results because I'm like genetically blessed because that's not what I'm saying at all. All I'm saying is you're not going to see them in the same time frame and that works for everything and that's because of genetics. So don't look at someone's progress and be like, oh my god, I've been working out for nine months, she's been working out for nine months and I don't look like her yet because that person's genetics are going to affect how quickly they put on muscle on certain parts of their body. And it also depends on the exercises that they're doing, how often that they're at the gym, how many calories they're consuming. It's just so many factors that you don't know and that you can't control. So just focus on yourself and not so much on what everyone else is doing. Like take people's advice, take their tips, try out their exercises, but just remember that you're different. So don't feel like you're never going to get to like where you want to be because it's taking you longer than someone else because that's just something that's out of your control. Stay dedicated, stay consistent, eat enough food. If you're not eating enough, you're not going to gain weight. You can gain weight. You just have to eat enough. You will have to force yourself to eat, but that's just part of it. Your body will adapt. It's going to be hard. If it were easy, everyone would have a big butt. Like, let's just be honest here, but it's not easy and Genetics are a huge thing. So I just wanted to throw that in. Little rant over. Um, one more thing, I lied. Nutrition, calories in versus calories out. There is no perfect foods to eat. Get your micros in, please eat vegetables because you need them to be healthy. Like your body needs micronutrients. So make sure you're getting that in. Make sure you're getting your allotted protein in. Doesn't have to be hella protein. I have maybe 100 grams a day max. Um, make sure you're eating enough carbs and fats. It's all gonna depend on your macros. I have an entire video on that, so check that out if you have no idea what I'm talking about. But just focus on calories and not what are good foods and bad foods because at the end of the day, it's going to depend on you and what you enjoy eating. So for myself, I can throw in a bunch of chips and cookies every single day and it doesn't affect my progress because I know what my body works best on. The majority of my diet is protein, carbs, cleaner foods, because that's what I enjoy eating and that's what I feel best on. Focus on what you feel best eating and not how you look eating that because like I said, fat gain is inevitable. If you're trying to gain weight, it's going to happen. Just have to get over it. But if you feel like you're gaining weight too quickly, drop your calories or take out something, see how you feel without it. And if you feel a little better, then slowly implement it back in and figure out how much you should be eating of certain foods. It's not the foods that you're eating, it's really how much of it that you're eating. So you don't want to eat McDonald's all day long because you're going to feel terrible and then you're not going to want to go to the gym. And then when you get to the gym, you're not going to be able to do anything because you don't have any energy. So focus on how you feel, not so much how you look, because it's going to take a while to see results. And if you're not seeing results, you're not going to feel like you're doing well. And that's not always the case because it takes a really long time to see changes. But at least if you feel good and you feel good in the gym, you know you're doing something right. So if you somehow haven't caught on by now, this is my favorite monster at the moment. Ultra red, even better than the white one. 
We got a Lenny and Larry's uh, Snickerdoodle because they finally restocked. So I got two of these. Um, I always get them from GNC. And then this is another one of my favorites. It's the white chocolate macadamia nut. So I'm back now. It is 4.08. I was there for like two hours and 40-ish minutes. And that was 100% the best lift that I have had in so, so long. So I started by just warming up and I am eventually going to do that mobility video for you guys uh, just to show you how I warm up for lower body in general and then also like squats and deadlifts because I kind of do the same thing for everything. Um, so that will be coming soon, but if you guys want to see kind of like a sneak peek, I did post something on my Instagram. It was a while ago, so I think if you scroll down maybe like two months back, I've got a video where I have like my warm-up routine just sped up and I list everything. I don't explain how to do anything, but if you just want to see what I do, that is basically everything. So I'll try and link the Instagram post in the description box um, so you guys can easily find it. But I warmed up and then I did squats. So I was just working with 115, which is actually like my first warm-up set, like whenever I start squatting, to be honest. So I'll usually go from doing the bar for like eight reps and then I'll jump up to 115 and then I'll do 135 and then I'll move on to whatever um, I'm like programming to do that day. So today we just did 115 for four sets of eight, went really, really well. I hate doing volume, but I make myself do it because I want to like get used to doing volume and I also want to push myself. So it felt really light, it's just like the breathing that's a lot harder because you have to control your breath every single rep because you are just continuously squatting, which is not the way that I usually squat. I usually stay in between the, uh, I'd say three to like six rep range. So I like to throw in a volume day once a week. And then we moved on to deadlifts and we hit a new PR. So we are finally in, I say finally, like this, like I've been deadlifting forever. This was like my fifth time deadlifting, I think. And we hit 225 for one. Went kind of slow, but I'm so happy. So we hit a couple new PRs. Um, we hit 205, because the last time I deadlifted, I hit 200, so 205 for one. Then I jumped up to 215, and then I jumped up to two plates with this 225. And for deadlifts, what I was really focusing on was tightening my lats and tightening my upper back. So you guys didn't see what I was doing in between sets, but I have a very long resistance band, which a lot of people like use for pull-ups. Um, it's my red one. And I was doing uh, just banded pull aparts, which I usually do before benching. Um, and then kind of rotations, internal, external, uh, for my back and my like upper trap area because I have a really hard time keeping that tight when I'm deadlifting and it just makes your life so much harder when you don't keep your upper back tight because your lower back completely takes over and it's really, really slow off the ground. Whoa. 